Don't become a ghost yourself. I've been a ghost all my life. Thief is a stealth action adventure game developed by Ardus Montreal and is a reboot to the game series of the same name from the late 90s. Despite having a few good ideas speckled throughout its 10 or so hour campaign, it is a game with some truly horrid gameplay elements that ruin what could have been a great return to form for the stealth genre. I'm going to try to avoid comparing this game to the older titles from Looking Glass Studios as it is after all a reboot. This is not a game with the Keepers, the Hammerites or the Pagans and there is no Steven Russell whatsoever. So if you're just watching this hoping I'm going to be complaining about how much this game is nothing like the others, then just stop watching right now. The story focuses on the escapades of Master Thief Garrett and his special skill of always managing to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. In the game's prologue, it's business as usual for Garrett as he's hanging out in the city, ripping off rich folks and hanging around with an old thief buddy named Aaron. The two of them soon get into some trouble, Aaron is apparently killed and Garrett loses his memory. Garrett, I'm slipping! Ah! When he returns to the city, he finds the place overrun by the corrupt City Watch and a figure known only as the Baron, whilst the citizens of the city suffer from a plague called the Gloom. There's a big cinematic focus on the storyline with some lengthy cutscenes rendered with the Unreal 3 engine. Careful, Garrett. There are worse things in the shadows than you. It's not exactly riveting stuff and it can be hard to follow what the hell is going on at times, but the general gist is that Garrett is working with his friend Basso and stealing stuff for some guy because this guy needs the stuff to do other stuff. Garrett is the same cynical, lovable rogue he always was and he's voiced by a guy named Roman Ozani. I don't get involved in politics. Who honestly does the best with what he's got and I think he's put in a really good performance, even if some of the lines come across a little bit ham-fisted. As a rule, I don't kill people unless I have no other choice. Throughout the game, you'll be using the tools of the trade, items which most Thief fans will be familiar with. Water and rope arrows, flash bombs, and a blackjack for taking down unaware opponents. <laughs> Stealth plays a big part in the gameplay, and most of the time is spent avoiding enemies and staying out of the light. Much like Deadly Shadows, the city works as a hub for missions. Aside from the main story missions, of which there are nine, you can also complete a couple dozen side missions for Basso, which mainly involve breaking into people's homes and stealing a particular piece of loot. You can also crack safes, cut paintings from frames with a scalpel, disable traps with wire cutters and purchase upgrades from various fences around the city. Navigating the city can be confusing at times, but it's ultimately very enjoyable, especially when you can find a nice spot to perch yourself on, watching all the citizens move below. It's a bit frustrating that Garrett doesn't have a jump ability, though he can move across most surfaces in a parkour-like fashion, and the camera even switches to a third-person perspective when he has to scale particularly large terrain. But the biggest new inclusion is Garrett's focus ability, something that can be used to improve certain actions. You can use focus ability to do things like bring time to a crawl when in combat or lockpicking, or just upgrade it to highlight loot and other secrets in the game world. Like the other upgrades, it just comes down to whether or not you've got the gold to spend. And I don't think there's any time when you actually need focus mode to progress, so that's something to keep in mind for the purists. And for the first couple of hours, everything is pretty sweet. The visuals on the PC look amazing with great dynamic lighting, atmospheric effects and textures, and the sound design and music has a lot of polish. There's some fantastic early missions, a standout being one where you sneak through a brothel slash opium den before descending beneath to an ancient cathedral. But the more you play the game, the more the cracks begin to show. Being a thief, you're going to be doing a lot of thieving, which has unfortunately been turned into an extremely monotonous process. For every single piece of loot that you steal, it has its own little two or so second animation where Garrett reaches out and grabs the item. For every single piece of loot. Just let that sink in for a moment. And these animations carry across to practically every single action in the game, from turning on light switches through to opening cupboards and doors, and it turns what should be a simple act into a goddamn chore. The majority of loot items are also very incidental, trinkets and bits of loose chains that are ultimately worth diddly squat. You know, forks, scissors and wine glasses, that kind of stuff. And they only add up to a couple of pieces of gold each. It never feels like you're really making any big scores, you feel more like a petty thief than a master thief. Even for the bank heist mission where you clean out an entire vault, you're only walking away with a couple of thousand gold at most. 
I'd rather they just put even half the amount of loot in a level but double the amount of gold they're worth. The end result is that they've somehow taken all the fun out of stealing and in a game where that's the primary focus, that's a pretty big fuck up. You can't even knock out an enemy without sitting through an unskippable takedown animation over and over. What happened to just whacking someone quickly over the back of the head with the blackjack? Instead, we're given this lengthy animation where Garrett brutally whacks an enemy upside the head and slowly lays them down on the ground. It got to the point in the game where I just avoided enemies entirely. The other option to stealth is flat out combat, and the combat is, quite expectedly, just horrible. There's no other way to describe it. What combat initially breaks down to is whacking enemies with your blackjack until their health is low enough to knock them out. This strategy is obviously pretty much useless against more than a single enemy or any enemy with a ranged weapon. If you've invested enough focus points into melee combat, you can instantly knock out an opponent with a well-aimed swing, but once again, this can be pretty useless when you're ganged up on, which happens 99% of the time you are detected. Thankfully, the stealth system is decent enough, whilst not amazing. Staying in the shadows is still the order of the day and works well enough for most of the time. In lieu of surfaces making different degrees of noise, you've instead got to look out for things like broken glass, precariously placed vases and pots, and even things like birds and dogs, which make a lot of racket when they're spooked, alerting nearby enemies. I have found the enemy AI to be highly inconsistent, however, and there's been times when they've spotted me out of their peripheral vision, but then other times when they're totally oblivious to me standing three feet away from them in their direct line of sight. But all things considered, the stealth is probably one of the most polished aspects of the game. Thief's other main problem is just that the story is really uninspired. A lot of the plot twists are either totally obvious beforehand or just not very impactful. During a cutscene I can only imagine was intended to be revelatory, I literally had to stop the game and Google the character they were talking about, as I had no idea who they were referring to. He must be planning another ritual. There's also a lot of needless profanities in the dialogue that just feel horribly out of place and very forced. And for my men to do what they're fucking told. Even the events that start the game's plot is so contrived, it's just painful. In case you've forgotten, let me just say again that all of the events in this game were put in motion because Garrett's love interest or friend or whatever got angry over little more than Garrett being a meanie head and fell through a clearly fragile skylight like a total idiot. <laughs> this is apparently the best they could come up with. Hey, I got a crazy idea. Why not drop Garrett through the skylight? Why not have him trying to retrace the events that happened after that night? I believe the term is a backstory. He could start off as an inexperienced thief. Maybe he was being mentored by Basso at the time. You know, develop the character a bit. I mean, he is, after all, the protagonist of the game. By the end of the 10 or so hour story, I was just in autopilot mode, trying to finish the game as fast as I could to get it all over with. And I can tell you, I had no interest in anything that was going on. Once the main story is finished, you can roam the city at your leisure and finish up all the remaining side missions and collect the upgrades you couldn't previously afford. You're also given the option to replay any of the main missions, but the fact that you can't change the difficulty without starting a new game entirely is really the final nail in the coffin for me. But you can tell these guys tried really, really hard to make a good game. They obviously played the originals and they've even got an asylum mission that feels like a direct homage to the Shellbridge Cradle from Thief Deadly Shadows. You shouldn't be here. And they have really nailed the sound and visuals, even if it does have some truly horrible optimization problems. But there's just so many fundamental problems with the game and bizarre design choices that hold it back from being anything other than painfully average. In the end, it all just falls on its ass. And it's a damn shame.